All right. right there. All right. What's going on? What's going on, fellas? Let me say hi to Günther. Günther, what's going on, my brother? Thank you for coming on. Because You're it's welcome, been man. it's been forever. I, the last time I saw you, I think was at the Flex Pro. I don't know how long ago that was. Oh my God! <laughs> it was about ten years. <laughs> yeah, it's been forever. It's was, been forever. I, I was at the Olympia in 2018. I I ran actually quick into Milos uh, at the show. So that was a uh, and who was uh, who won there? Oh, um, Sean Roden. Who would, Sean Roden? Yeah, right. So oh, okay. was great. It changed a lot though. It was such a weird experience for me. Being on the other side of the stage and yeah. with all the changes, it's kind of weird. So, so good to do. So, so you been, have you been away from bodybuilding, or or, or you just you just not that 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 um uh, that open with uh, whatever you do in private life? Um, you know, I do kind of follow. Obviously, a lot of you know, I follow you and stuff, and I keep up with the Olympia sometimes uh, uh, and then Arnold Classic. Uh, but I'm literally not that into or familiar with all the new guys and the all different classes that they have today than, you know, compared to the past, you know, in the past, you can name everybody, but now it's like, oh my God, there's so many of them. And then you have the physique classes. So I'm not really in there. I follow, I think, obviously a few guys, uh, you know, that I know from right. competing way back and stuff. So. Right. You and me both. I don't. I don't follow all of them either. I don't. I don't know all of them either. There's too many categories. Too many names. Yeah, exactly. You know, it's nothing special anymore. It's like it's like everybody. No, you go into gold. You're nobody special because everybody's a pro now. I heard. So, but are you still in California? Are you still at the same place? Yes, I still live in Amosa Beach, and uh, I love it here. So. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Good, good to see you. You look healthy, brother. Yeah, thank you, man. I'm doing better. We had been out two and a half years. It was great. And then all of a sudden we got COVID last week. Yeah, yeah. I remember you told me, so you feel good. Yeah, Yeah, it's kind of like up and down still. Your energy level is not right there, but... Uh uh, you know, it's, Milos it's can okay. it's Milos can tell us about COVID because he had it a few times. <laughs> uh, yeah, let, let me tell you. So actually, Chris, you're the first one to have it. I remember I was in a Fit right. Nation gym, and they're like, "Oh my God, Chris got it!" And, and that was at the time when uh, you think you have a COVID, you might die. You know? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Was... in the beginning, in the beginning, <laughs> in the beginning, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but but Gunter, uh, it's good to see you. Uh, but uh, Dennis asked you. I'm curious. I mean, you disappeared from the face of bodybuilding world. I mean, yeah. I, I'm sure that we all follow a little bit, but back in the day, in the 90s, of course, uh, I've seen you everywhere, right? I, uh, uh, last yeah. time, like, I ran into 2018. I mean, uh, how, could you, how could you just get out of the sport? I mean, this is, <laughs> in essence, who you are. No, <laughs> you know, it's like, you know what, I, I actually, a lot of people ask that. I, I don't know. It, it, um, peace of mind. I don't know. I needed peace, I guess. I don't know. It was so weird. I got, I got um, I don't know. It, it, it got to a point where I felt like I just needed a break. You, you get that? You did know you, what I mean? Did you, like did you stop training, though? Did you stop training? Oh, no, I, I still work out. I mean, I haven't worked out last week, but I train four or five times a week. And uh, So, but you, know, you never so, you never took a break where you said, okay, I'm going to just take some time off now, like, like, oh, like no, what no, I no, did. No, no, no I, I still work out everything yeah. all the time. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I, I, still, I, I still weigh between 250 and 260, you know? I'm jealous. I'm like all I'm jealous okay. of you guys' motivation to still train every day or five days a week. Oh, you know, I, what, that keeps my sanity, man. I, that's still what I need. You know, it kind of like, well, I don't know. It feels like, you know, it's good for you. I don't know. Yeah, yeah good there, good there. What I was referring to, it's not training. It's just like you're not coming to the Arnold Classic. You're not coming to the Olympia. You're not yeah. really around. I mean, you kind of... Uh, step away from bodybuilding. This is what I meant. Yeah, you know, uh, Milos, when, because at the time, you know, everything pretty much was me, ran through Rita and all these things. So the magazines and all this stuff. And so when Joe and all that changed, I, I don't know, I mean, I went did one show and, and, and when I came back, I did, we did the, uh, Mr. Olympia, that online, you know, and I was commentating, actually it went really well. So that was the last thing I really did. And then kind of like everything, you know, I didn't really found my niche after I was competing. I put it this way. 
you know, or I wasn't really as interested in any, like, like I know I see you training a lot of a bunch of guys and stuff. So that was never really my thing to go and train just a lot of people. I mean, I, I've done a few high-end clients, but not bodybuilding-wise, you know, just because we used to own a gym and stuff and, you know, like a small, uh, like a boutique gym. So that's where I had some private clients and stuff. But, you know, um, I never went to where I felt like I uh, have a niche to go train some people, prep them for the shows, what keeps you going and coming back to the shows, you know? So Yeah. But, yeah. Is, um, yeah you're Gunther. German, right? Yes. Yeah, yeah. I'm half German. I was going to say, Gunther, um, go ahead. Uh, yeah, I was, yeah. I, just because you just mentioned Joe Weider, and that, that brings me back mm -hmm. to something mm -hmm. we talked about last week. Where I was a little, uh, you know, I was a little, you know, I, I thought about this after after we did the roundtable where Kevin mentioned um, about what Joe Weider said to him, and I, I still somehow believe maybe he got it kind of mixed up, and he was probably thinking about <laughs> thinking about Wayne Demilia because Wayne Demilia was the kind of guy that would do and say things like that, you know, at the end of the day where he said that. You guys know what I'm talking about when he mentioned about Dorian is this this business that's why he's winning, because I think if that would be the case. If that, if that would be the uh, the the way uh, Joe was thinking, don't you think that good the Schlickham would be Mr. Olympia? Because he was Joe Weider's favorite boy. I Man. mean, come on, we all can we all agree that Günther was Weider's favorite boy? So and and, and, and that and that's why this brings me to what we said yet last week, where I I don't agree because when you look at the, the way the Olympia and everything is run now, under Jim Mannion, you know that shit will not cut it. You know, and and I don't believe that this has anything to do with business. Who wins the Olympia at the end of the day? Yeah, hundred percent right, Dennis. You, you brought the, that crystal clear picture. If anybody would be favored, it would be Gunter, right? Right. Because uh, oh yeah, uh, <laughs> uh, another fucked up uh, 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 German last name that uh, nobody can pronounce. Schleicher. <laughs> Schleicher. Yeah. Yeah. Gotta learn the name. <laughs> What yeah, did it get? No, get uh, I, I always. Dennis, but yeah. Now that you you brought it, uh, Kevin for sure uh, makes it up because Joe had an empire. He had all the business. Right. He could move the the chess figures any which way he wanted. If he wanted to fix something, he would fix. Uh, I don't think that's the case at all. So, uh, well, but well, yeah. I don't think that that Joe at the time when I came in, I don't think that he has his hands as fixing anything. Because I ran into a lot of issues because Joe liked me so much. And that's why I think, you know, like there were a few things where I could have placed better and I didn't. You know, like uh, the Miss Olympia and stuff. It's like when everybody grew in 2002, everybody was growing and stuff. Well, I didn't even get compared to the top three at all. You know, so like I said, it, it one way, yeah, it benefited me from. Uh, getting a contract, getting a lot of work, but it didn't benefit me from really competing because I, I, I swear to God, there, and there were a lot of times where that literally hurt me more than it did me good. Yeah. Possibly. Yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%. I just wanted to bring that up one more time because I think he maybe got it confused with, with, with Wayne, that Wayne would maybe say something like this because I don't believe. And, and, and when you look at, and wasn't Jim, Jim Mannion even head judge back then? Oh, yeah, he was told yeah. that. Jim, Jim doesn't yeah. play that shit. He doesn't play that yeah. shit. You know? Yeah, he, and, he plays now against. But, Gunther, let, let's just make this straight. I think the 2002 Olympia uh, was a breakthrough for you. I mean, you yeah. be, became a people's champ. You came out of nowhere. Even prejudging, they didn't notice you until late, and then you keep coming in. And I mean, you placed top uh, six, right? Fifth. But, uh, you fifth. Didn't get yeah, but, but yeah. that that was, I mean, let's face it also, which uh, people maybe don't understand. Oh, Gunther was favored by Joe. You still won only one show, one pro show. And in that pro show, you beat Ronnie Coleman reigning Mr. Yeah. Olympia, which was unheard of. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so I agree with you that maybe uh, connection with Joe and uh, especially at the time, uh, Vane kind of didn't want to go with what Joe wants, right? <laughs> you know, so <laughs> he, he was probably happy that you didn't win. But uh, uh, yeah. speaking of that, uh, 2002, 
you turned pro in 1994, I remember, because that was with you, with your pro debut. I, I yeah. follow you even from Germany, because the 93, when you won the world championship, uh, I had at the time, that's why I was going to ask Dennis if he followed the sport in the beginning of 90s. There was uh, uh, my friend Lambert Boom. Boom, Boom, Lambert Boom. Lambert Boom. I remember yeah, that you, you were contesting with him. <laughs> but then, you know, for years, 94, you were not noticed. 95, you played second to, to Ronnie at the Canada, yeah. right? But yeah. all these years, uh, let's just face it, all the competitors, which are, it's still just a Gunter, right? They didn't really consider you consider you top notch until yeah. that year. And 2002, uh, whatever, I know that you worked with Chad Nichols and uh, all of a sudden you, you just became a top yeah. contender. I'm sure that Chris doesn't like losing to you and the GNC, right? <laughs> uh, and, uh, <laughs> Kevin, I, I, Kevin, Kevin was happier than I was. Man. Yeah, Kevin, Kevin, Kevin jumped on stage like a groupie that night. I remember that. <laughs> well, <laughs> the thing is, Kevin was, <laughs> Kevin was happy because he saw an opening for himself to beat Ronnie. Right. So he was just, he was like, somebody hit him and knock him down and I'm going to finish him at Olympia. That was his thought behind it. I was yeah. I was just twisted because I was like you know we we're we we're in uh, Amsterdam at the time, and we still been on we've been on the road for a few shows and then we had the GNC yeah. after that, right? So you came in fresh and I mean this guy sitting his ass at home while we on the while we on the uh, we on the on road the, uh, we on the road on the road yeah. and shit. Yeah. You know? <laughs> we ain't been home in weeks. This guy. <laughs> Sitting there hard we, and ready. We, I was like, he was at home. Man, he like, was at home getting ready for the show. We were already rebounding for the fourth hey, time. Yeah, we, we, I'm over there in Amsterdam eating some muffins and all that <laughs> <laughs> brownies. <in there. laughs> oh, Ginda, what did Ginda, Ginda, What did it feel like? This is a question I always had for you since since yeah. since day one. What did it feel like knowing that Joeita has got your back no matter what? Well, well, it got your back. Um, it obviously felt like really good security too. Mm. But um, the, in the other way, though, I always, you know, at the time, what I thought was a great niche too. I went out with. Remember, I did a lot of things for Walmart. I went to shareholder meetings and all yep. that stuff. I met a lot of the CEOs. You know, you gotta understand. We that you know was really broad. They had like a the shift line. You remember that they had that shift. A, yeah, you know, shift. Move free. Yeah, I called move free. Yes. I mean, we're talking about these accounts, right? So when I worked there with the sales rep, and we went to a lot of the Walmart stuff and stuff, we could literally increase the business from like eighty million a year to a hundred million a year just with one product. Mm -hmm. So for some reason, when I was obviously involved and did some appearances there too, you know, well, you know, we really liked it because I always said, "Man, this guy is great. He he comes everywhere. He talks. You know, he talks to some people in the stores and all this stuff." So I kind of lived. You know the little, the little uh, jobs on the side that sometimes a lot of people didn't talk, pay attention to, kind of literally yeah. paid off. You know that's where I got a good reputation in the real building. You no, know? you were a great ambassador of the sport. That's why I was surprised that you always disappeared, like, like gone. Yeah, man. Well, and you know then my son came along. So and after I actually retired in after two thousand six. I just I just noticed my body wasn't responding anymore the way I did, and I said, "Look, I can push this, and you push too far, or you just come. You have a step. You know, you have a different. Uh, or you say that at a different time in your life, you start a new chapter. Next you know, phase, me, yes. It, yeah, for me it was family. I always wanted to have a kid and stuff, so, and that's what I literally focused on. I took some acting classes for a year and stuff, went to Hollywood three times and stuff." What in the beginning was okay, but at the end, man, if, if you gotta be connected, you gotta give it your all. And, it's a hard business, you know, huh? It, it, well, you see, I, I actually occasionally met uh, Dwayne, Dwayne uh, the Rock, you know, and stuff. I mean, dude, you gotta, you gotta be all in it and live it, you know. So, I remember, I remember, I, I, I accidentally stumped on a video. I mean, a movie uh, with the Oktoberfest. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Did you guys see the movie Oktoberfest? I saw it. <laughs> yeah. 
Well, they, you know, unfortunately, I get a lot of free coffee at Starbucks for that because you have all these college kids working at Starbucks. So they, they are huge fans of the Broken Lizard group who actually have a big following from uh, the uh, college kids, right? Mm -hmm. So they kind of do parties, they watch the movies. So I got always free coffee because they're hey, you in beer fest. Hey! So I got free coffee. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, it was funny. It actually paid not bad. And, uh, I still get residuals from that one. You know, that's, that's it awesome. is really well on sales, yeah. That's awesome. That's awesome. Chris, you never thought about going to Hollywood? <laughs> well, I did some things before before I bought it. And actually, during, um, I did like some some commercials that uh, one with Sport K. I had the principal role. Uh, uh, Pepsi, I had a principal role also. Uh, and uh, I did uh, Last Boy Scouts. I started trying to. Uh, read for some cards or stuff, but that was like. So you audition? So you auditioned? Oh yeah. That that must that auditions. must be hard going to an audition. It was cool. Though. I, I loved it because they, I, they liked my look at the time. I had the body of Max. <laughs> I can't. I just can't. I, every time I think about this, I laugh my ass off. When I think <laughs> about the middle. when I no no when I think about the audition that Generation Iron had Dennis Wolf do in in in, in Los Angeles. <laughs> oh. <yeah. laughs> <laughs> That's messed up. Oh, they you know what? I think that that was bad for generation. They did that shit on purpose, man. That trying shit, to make him and look then off. yeah, trying to make him look bad on the damn fucking <laughs> video, trying to say his lines, man. That was I didn't I didn't think that was fair at all. Oh, that's messed up. <laughs> yeah. Milos, what about you? Well, I, I listen. Ninety five. I went to to. Uh, um, Commercial, well, I was all sports commercial, and I actually got it. My first audition, I got it. I was like all stoked. I was uh, playing in a futuristic 2020 World Games. I don't know if you remember. I had lift like 5,000 pounds and all this shit. Now, of course, we are, we are uh, uh, way past that. There was the swimmers uh, competing against the dolphins. There was like all kind of like futuristic things that actually didn't happen. Not obviously we're here. But uh, I was driving from Temecula all the way to L.A. And then uh, this is exactly what it was. There was a commercial for a fucking Hercules, right? So I'm thinking, I'm in a contest shape, you know, 96, 97, right? And so I was, at that time, fairly good looking, right? I could pass as a... <laughs> and, and, and listen, I, I didn't get it. You know, and what I say, you're too muscular. You're too ripped. It's a fucking Hercules commercial. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I missed my shot. I missed my shot. I missed my shot with a good one. I could have been, I could have been way up here. I got they 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 emailed me and they wanted me to come to LA so bad for an ad, and you guys all saw it afterwards. I couldn't make it. I had to. I didn't know. I traveled. I said no. I couldn't. I didn't make it. I didn't even go. And they asked over and over. Old Spice. Remember that? Oh, do you remember the first one where this guy was riding on the horse sideways? Right. They wanted me to do that ad. I swear to God, you know. And I and I was like, I was I was traveling. I said I can't do it. And they asked me, is it? Can you, ex you know, just you know, go a little bit later and come to L.A.? I was like, no, I can't. I was. Oh. Like, oh. I'm sure that that dude blew up. That dude blew up, and I remember I saw him on one of, on one of the talk shows one day. He said, changed his life forever. Uh, right. <laughs> also. Also, I, I did a little something. Go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, I did a little little print work also. Uh, sports, uh, was it Sports Illustrated? For I was a football player in that, and also um, I did a picture with a a, a, a two hundred pound python. That's like oh. one of my most favorite uh, photos ever. That yeah. was in National Geographic. That one right there, man. That was like they they. That's again like like you did uh, um, also. Um, you know, they kept calling me, just like you said, uh, Dennis, kept calling me. I said, no, I don't want to do it. I'm scared of snakes. I'm not interested. <laughs> Call me another month later. Oh, you want to do it, Chris? No, I'm not really interested because I'm, you know, I'm scared of snakes. Then they called me another another month. They called me again. I just said, okay, I'll do it because they said, we'll come here, pick you up in a limo, bring you down to the studio to be very professional. Uh, they had two snakes on the ground. So they go get the mirror with it. Go get them. Thing was just like this <laughs> fat. And I'm like, man, it's like 18 feet long, 200 pounds. It's been in like an anaconda. It's been in a lot of different movies. And so just to hold it up, it was like 10 seconds 
every 10 seconds they'll take him off me because it was just so heavy he's gonna just knock me down to the ground so yeah i, I get it man like stuff like that is like something you just have to do man because I, obviously, I, I was the only bodybuilder ever to be in, in National Geographic. Yeah. Yeah. But can I tell you, because Chris, you remember this very well. 98, after the Olympia, next day we did a Brian Moss photo shoot at that Coney Island. Oh, yeah. Uh, and uh, when you were falling asleep, standing in the back. <laughs> and but listen, uh, I don't know, Dennis, if you ever heard this one. Uh, that's a good one about a snake. So, so I am there, right? Uh, you eat everything after the Olympia, right? And of course, when you pig out night before, I had a bad stomach. I had to go to the fucking bathroom so bad, but we were in a bus. So oh, as soon as yeah. we got there, right? I, I run there and I say, hey, and that's the freak show, right? This is the freak show the, with the <laughs> swallowing the swords and all this. So you say, where's the bathroom? And they, they point out, right? So I ran, man, and there was a small, little narrow fucking uh, uh, room, you know, kind of that you touch shoulders anyway. And I'm here on the toilet. Here is the uh, door, and all of a sudden there's a big bucket in front of me, right? And <laughs> there is a, you know, okay, this feels weird, right? And I'm terrified of snakes. I mean, I don't know uh, at which level, uh, Chris, you are, but I'm terrified. Ooh. So next thing you know, this fucking albino python, you know, oh, yeah. and he's looking at me like this. Like, <laughs> the contortionist. Oh, shit. <laughs> the contortionist had it. <laughs> and that, that was the moment that I have to admit I didn't even wipe my ass. Right? <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> I'm like <laughs> uh, say, you know how they're super fast and all this shit. So I don't know, you know, if I make a wrong move, so you, you don't breathe, open the door, and they're like, I fucking ran. And I'm like, oh my god! It's a python. And I said, oh, don't worry, that's the fucking George. That's our pet. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Thanks for telling me, man. I'm, I'm not scared of spiders. I mean, snakes. Snakes don't no? do anything. No, but spiders. I'm spiders. Uh, I moved out of my parents' house because of a spider in my room. <laughs> I kid you not. I got the fuck out. I had, I had to go because I, I saw this. And in Germany, they don't have spiders like they probably have them here. But it was, you know... A, 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 hairy legs and everything so I jumped I jumped on the chair because I don't even want to be on the same floor I don't want to be on the same level with the spider so I grabbed something from the table and I start throwing shit I want to kill it and it went behind the closet I got the You're fuck right. out that's right. out yeah. done did you guys I want to change change the topic here a little bit did you guys follow uh, the uh, muscle contest in uh, Brazil this past weekend or weekend before la yeah. last weekend yeah there's some, yeah, uh, okay. there was some. There was some controversy going around with this uh, horse MD guy. Yeah, but, but uh, we touched that subject uh, last time, right? No, 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 no. Oh, because of the, no, no. the height and but weight. The height and weight, right? It's kind of you know how <laughs> tall you are, right? And you know how much you weigh. And if you are four kilos over, you know how how do you think you can uh, yeah. get away with? It? But I, I saw some videos where he supposedly said that he's doing stretching stuff to get taller. He wants to get in and he wants to be, you know, hide it in taller this time. <laughs> so he, he thought that he could stretch himself a couple. And, and he thought that he, now I don't know. That's probably what he said. He thought he can stretch himself an inch or so as though he can get, be in a taller way. He can go up to 100 and whatever it was, kilos. Hey. Right? That's just like the but the but the controversy that about. the controversy that that's been what's going around is that you know supposedly supposedly Tarek Tarek Tamer's brother was uh, giving him basically a pass by calling out 101 when he was 104.8. So now I don't know if that's what he said because it was all in Portuguese. But at the end of the day, I was like, who would be? And, and that's why I have a problem believing the story. Who would do an open weigh-ins with people and photographers and videos when they want to bullshit? Yeah. You, who would? Yeah. You no, know, no. So that's why I, I I don't believe that this is the case. I think yeah, it, it was taken public. out of context somewhere and just edited together to make it look like they're trying to bullshit and bring him into the show, even though he was three and a half or three point eight pounds overweight, which I don't believe. Kilos, yeah. kilos, kilos, kilos. Yeah, yeah. But listen, I, I tell you this. 2006 uh, Asian Games. I went there. Uh, you know the whole story. I was suspended afterwards. You know, but uh, 
it all started with official weigh-in. And I, I knew, I mean, when you look at the, you were there. I was there, with, I was there, yeah. Yeah, but you didn't come for official weigh-in, right? No. And official weigh-in is like, okay, we all came there, but nobody could see the scale. The only person to see the scale is Paul Chua's guy. So, you know, the, you know, we can only see his face and then he's reading whatever he's reading. Yeah. And there's a guy like, well, God damn, like, there's no way he makes like 70 kilos, yeah. you know. 70.0, okay, can we see it? No, nope. stay right there, right? So th this is how it started. That was and a great, that was a great weekend because that was the weekend, all that shit blew up, all that uh, shit. <laughs> Chris, can you imagine, we go to a show, and it's called, it was the Asian Games. Right. And Milos was there because he had two the Malaysian guys in the show, which was absolute easy winner, clear. Right. When you look at him, clear cut winner. And I remember I was there with Bada, and uh, okay. and the prejudging was just over, you know. And and the Asian guy, the Malaysian guy, he must have felt great because this it wasn't even close. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it, Mickey Mouse and Arnold. It wasn't even close. <laughs> and then after prejudging, Bada told us the guy from uh, from Dubai is going to win. How do you know? Well, this is already clear. The guy, the Dubai president, whatever had a deal with Chua. We didn't believe it. Wow. So, $5, do you remember we were in the car? We were in the car after prejudging. That's before the finals, where they're on the radio, in the English-speaking radio channel. They already announced the winners. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> that was the bullshit that was going on back then with Paul Chua, Rafael Santoa, all these guys. They were all in it. You okay, know? can I... I mean, this is super interesting story that I said it before, but people need to understand this right. to see what kind of corruption goes there. Okay, so uh, I trained these Malaysian guys. They won world championship, both. But then uh, Minister of Malaysian uh, Youth and Sport calls me, Lady Gato Azalina, I remember. And she goes, sir, my athletes were told by IBB president that they cannot win the gold medal at the Asian Games. And... It's very important for my country, for uh, economy, for prestige, all this stuff. So it's like, what are you suggesting? Uh, that, oh, scores are going to be fixed. So I don't believe it, right? And those guys came to train with me in uh, um, Fullerton, and they had a list of every uh, winner in every category, you know, from a month before the show. And you know this. Oh, because, my, oh my God. Yeah. So, but, but what happened is, so we go there, and uh, first, uh, way in is uh, is uh, as I said, it was fixed. You know, there, there were there were lightweight guys that were competing in the heavy and heavy. You know, I mean, it was crazy. But he starts the first uh, category, and uh, they asked him, "Okay, how about this Singaporean guy?" Singaporean guy looked like no way he can make a top five. You know, if if his mother is judging. Well, guess what? He's winning and he won. But that's, <laughs> <laughs> but that's the time when you uh, and uh, Bader, you probably don't remember, but Bader pointed out to me, to this sheik, that uh, they had a, a broken arm. He says, he paid 75000 for his guy to win. Your guy is not going to win. I said, come on. I, this is the first time I met Bader Bodaira. No way. And sure enough, this is what happened. But, but just, listen, just to make this crystal clear, just to make this crystal clear, that was... The IFBB on the on on the others, the amateur side, which was before affiliated with yes. the with the uh, with the at the IFBB uh, Pro League, but that was the main reason, one of the main reasons why the Pro League split from the IFBB uh -huh. because they didn't want to put up with that bullshit that they, they so, were doing uh, over there. You were there with me, right? Yes. So, what is my duty as the IFBB professional, right? I so said I'm witnessing the crime. Let me let me call and report <laughs> it. So I call. Uh, what's his name? Uh, uh, Rafael. Rafael. And guess yeah. what I got? Shut the fuck up. Yeah. Excuse me. I said, shut up. Keep it quiet. It's a, <laughs> because it's two day event, right? So basically, I didn't realize. Oh my God, he was on it. And yeah, of course. Time, there was a seventy five thousand for a gold medal, fifty for a, a silver, and twenty five for bronze. Times so many categories. You know what I mean? But I just reported it, right? Mm -hmm. And then guess what? I was suspended because I uh, <laughs> breached the code of conduct. Like, uh, what was what was I supposed to do? Uh, watch it and don't say nothing. So I, I, I remember said, that. Yeah, I was yeah. I was disqualified. Uh, 
suspended for a year, but I lost every contract. The reader contract, the supplement contract, publication, and the gym contract, which was the worst. People always ask how I got here. I was willing to work just a little harder than everyone else. Every damn day. If I can have hundreds of hours back, you know I'm gonna grab them. Spending hours prepping chicken, rice, and vegetables, F that. I rely on perfect nutrition. I rely on trifecta. But just to make it clear, I finally got the justification because uh, there was uh, Pavel Filiborn, who was an uh, IBB judge from Poland, there was an uh, uh, athlete's representative as an official, right? He calls me and says, Milos, everything you said about Paul Chua is proven. He is suspended and you're going to be reinstated. You know, but this is that part, right, that happened over there. Now, yeah, yeah and, 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 and the Pro League doesn't, didn't control the, the amateur. Yeah. And today, this is for all the listeners. Listen, we're talking about the IFBB International back then, which is now the IFBB Elite. So if you want to go into some some of that bullshit, that's where you want to be because that, <laughs> that never changed and it's still the same problem today. Yeah. So, and, and, so, I, yeah, so do, do I pick it up on right? Because I noticed the last couple of years at the Olympia, right here in, 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 in America, the Olympia, the Miss Olympia, um, I feel like, dude, they don't go anymore and have the same guy winning. I feel like they have more rotation going on. Is it is it now that they try to be more like the best person wins? Whoever is the best on stage wins. I think I, I think this is always it's always been this way. I just think I mean listen, it's it's a subjective sport, of course. We can't say, yeah. you know, I like him, you like this guy, yeah. some Chris it likes is, the other is. guy. So at the end of the day, I think it was always I, I I would never have a huge problem with somebody who you know with the with the Mr. Olympias, you know yeah, when when, I mean, when Dorian I, I, won when Dorian won did he have yeah. the most pleasing physique no but he brought something to the table that nobody else had, so you know yeah. and we talked about this before and the same with uh, the same with um with with Ronnie I mean come on Ronnie yeah. he was he was dominant you know it's just yeah. and now I think because they change it more because there's not we don't have that dominant person. Good. You're right. That we yeah. used to have. There's not nobody's as dominant as these guys were at that time. You know, or Phil. Phil Heath was dominant too. We got. I got to give it to him. <laughs> you know. You know the yeah. difference. You know the difference. I think. Uh, even though like they were like very dominant, it seemed like everybody really peaked their performance to their physique. Their physique was that we all peaked at the same time. Mostly, some people came through. Some people were earlier yeah. or light or younger. Yeah. But you got to understand the thicker things. It seemed like everyone's physique was peaking or just close to peaking. I think that was the one of the biggest, uh, one of the hardest things we had to deal with. Mm. Yeah. Okay, Dennis, uh, I, I put you in a bad position, guy. Okay? <laughs> Why? Because uh, yeah, uh, and I, I, let's speak openly. You said Dorian was dominant. It's really when you think about it, being dominant <laughs> in the hardest era of bodybuilding, nineties, right, mm -hmm. with everybody. You know, uh, Chris and Sean and Flex and uh, Kevin and all you know, shit. So that uh, contributes even more to his dominance. But did he really dominate every year he won? No, did he? probably okay? not, not. Not really. Not really. Yeah. Not, yeah. Not really. yeah. So that's what the baby Gunter was talking. Yeah. Because, that's, uh, yeah. That, you could go that's, this way. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. I mean, my, at the end, you always, you know, they're opinions. We all have opinions. I, and I, I understand it, but you could tell there were certain times where, like, for one, for, like, Sean Ray in 1994, I thought he was fucking on. Mm -hmm. I mean, he's not dominant in size or anything, but his physique was good, and he was, that was the best I've ever seen Sean Ray. Yeah. So he was second, anyway, right? Then, yep. Yeah. Yeah, and he was, he was second. And then uh, Dorian tore his bicep. And you can tell he wasn't quite as crisp as he used to be the year before, uh, before he won. So you could have said there, said, well, you know, he is totally on, and Dorian was quite a little bit off. Yeah, it was 1994 when he tore his bicep. Remember, he yeah. was holding water. Yeah, yeah, Gante, you were you were crazy, shredded, and dry many times. 
So uh, I, I'm sure that people want to, uh, you know, talk about this. Uh, I remember even like 99 Iron Man, right? Uh, you placed like fourth maybe. Or, but yeah. you were ripped to pieces. I mean, this is the show that uh, Chris won. And Chris, yeah, you look fucking phenomenal, obviously. Yeah. You know? But uh, uh, when you when you revisit and look at it again, and uh, uh, watching your condition, like you get this cellophane, paper thin skin, and you were bone dry. I mean, uh, this is uh, can you now that uh, you're not competing anymore? Can you disclose a little bit your pre-contest uh, methods? How you you got so fucking lean and hard and dry? <laughs> Actually, you know, it, uh, I tried the diet for that one, actually. Uh, I remember it was the first time that I felt I was really, like, getting there. And I, I did a low carb, and I and actually, uh, I did a blood type diet. You heard about that? Yeah, you blood right type. For your blood type, yeah. So what I did, actually, I it, and at the same time, I had low carb, high protein, high fat, you know. And for some reason, even though my body handles a lot of carbohydrates, I mean, can... I could eat some carbs, but uh, uh, it, it worked for me fine. I mean, I didn't have to do that much cardio, and I was just coming down. I took everything off. It really worked great. So it was that combination of a blood type diet, and uh, uh, literally I did uh, the high fat, high protein, and uh, lower carbs. And the only carbs I really did is for carving up then for, uh, you know, the last three days uh, of the, before the show. Yeah, then we're eating your dummy bears backstage when I told you don't eat them. <laughs> Remember? Don't eat them, yeah. Don't eat them, yeah. Ah, yeah, man. Uh, yes. it's crazy. It's crazy times, yeah. But, um, yeah, that, you know, I wasn't quite what I noticed, though, to, to, because, look, I was always 6'1 and to almost 6'2, right? It is so, it was so freaking hard to fill out the frame you know yeah. that's why you never see a basketball player being a, bi a bodybuilder i mean they, they need to weigh like 500 pounds i mean i you know to to have that much of a size i noticed that was my struggle always um because i felt like the best look for anything to promote i felt like was 285. well to go against ronnie i literally had to go in off season the heaviest i had to be uh 337 it was the heaviest i ever weighed and then i tell you all everything starts happening you get sleep apnea you snore like a crazy guy all of a sudden you don't rest as well and stuff and i was like you know man mark that cannot be good either so to to be competitive at my height and get up to 300 pounds now I to, and that was not that that was you know so i couldn't really do that with a diet then later on i had to start going and eating more carbs but the best conditioner that I felt like I got through the blood type diet and the uh, high fat, yes. uh, high protein and low carb. Can I can I ask this too? Because the, all three of you guys uh, work with the Chad, right? Uh, I remember kind of that uh, he was making you guys eat like uh, so many calories, like in burgers oh. and shit like this, you know, to keep up the weight, right? Jay yeah. Cutler just uh, told me and Regan, you know, many times that when he grew the, the most, I mean, he was so precise every single day, eating clean, but every night he would go and have a two burgers every fucking night. So did you did you do the same thing? Um, yeah, well, I, I didn't have really, yeah, I had a, my cheat day, but I didn't really have like two burgers. But there was times that I literally pounded cereal, like a huge bowl of cereal. <laughs> what type of night. cereal? Um, dude, I I don't know. It might have been Cheerios or something, no. some kind oh, of. Man. Chris, Chris is it? Uh, well, I thought I'm you. I, was that guy. I, was I thought you liked the Reese's peanut butter uh, uh, puffs or whatever that was. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know, uh, but you know, I mean, you you kind of did really put some weight on there. But my God, I, I I literally couldn't eat afterwards. You know what the, you know what I was the happiest when I retired. I didn't have to eat the food anymore. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I don't. For I don't sure. know about you guys. Like, I could literally not any eat more red meat or something. I chewed on a little steak for like a half an hour. I could yeah. not get it down. Yeah. My body was just done, man, with all the protein. Oh, I'm the same <laughs> way. I'm the same way. Exactly the same yeah. way. Oh. Hey, Gunther, how mm. so? How is the process of coming out of 
bodybuilding competition to retirement, like, was that a tough process for you to uh, to deal with? Because it was for me. Well, uh, dude, it, it, well, look, I believe if anybody says, well, it was the best thing, and I said, I don't believe it. You know, at the end, we all competitive. We, we you know, we want to be out there. We miss, you know, I always say that the most that I ever miss is walking on the Mr. Olympia stage, you know you did everything you can. Like for instance, 2002, you say, you know in your head, you know you look freaking amazing. You want to go and you want to show them. That moment you will always miss, you know? And I tell you what, nothing has replaced it yet. You know, it's like the, the getting ready for shows that, you know, even I remember the smell of the Manila Bay just checking into the hotel room just there was something about it getting there. It was, it, it was the, the, the highlight of the year, you know? And uh, yeah, nothing nothing else. I mean, it, I had a tough time with that too, trust me, man. It wasn't easy, you know? I mean, I have a lot of other things to focus on, but man, I, uh, that, that was tough. I'm not gonna yeah. lie. And I said, everybody said, oh, and you know, it's not a big deal, but it is a big deal because, you know, that's what you did for passion that would, you know, I mean, Tina was, what, 12 years old. I watched Conan. I was into lifting, you know. Mm. Yeah. Really. And, and then all of a sudden you kind of, you know, all of a sudden you don't have that, you know, anymore in front of you. And you don't know why. And, it's, and you ask yourself, well, why you train, you know, and all those stuff. Well, you know, you do it to try to be healthy and keep your body a little bit decent, you know. Yeah, yeah. Milos, what was your career highlight? I never even asked you. Oh, man, uh, I mean, listen, I'm the... You probably have so many, but trying to give me one. Uh, okay, I'll tell you this. I mean, my, my first pro show when I was uh, uh, at the San Jose Pro Invitational, where, where, where I went there just to possibly stand next to some good pro, and my friend is going to take a picture so I can send it to Yugoslavia, right? Yeah, I was on the stage, we jumped around, <laughs> and, you know, this guy. And, and then, listen, uh, I'm there, right? Uh, I didn't know nothing. That's my first for sure. So when the Miller is calling my name, but he can't say Miller Shacha, right? <laughs> so I'm just there posing for, for the guy. And, you know, then you realize that something is weird because uh, everybody's looking, you know, what's happening. And then you compare to number two, right? Oh, shit, that was me. For the first uh, call out in the symmetry round in the center against Ron Love and uh, Sonny Schmidt. And I actually won the symmetry round. So now, listen. I had no fucking idea I could possibly place the top three and qualify for Olympia on my pro debut. I really went there just to to have fun. So immediately, right after that, first qualified for Olympia, right? Uh, photo shoots the next day, cover of uh, uh, Iron Man, uh, muscle development, everything else, right? So this is how my career started. You know, so uh, this was the highlight. Uh, that year also, I like to say this story because you... I'm sure that you all guys love Lee Haney. If you remember, that was his last year. But uh, there was at least meeting in one of the hotel rooms, uh, which we had to go. And Lee Haney was there first one, right? First guy to be. I walked in. He uh, stood up. He was sitting. Came to me. shake my hands. and said, oh, you know, you're that Yugoslavian fan. Milo, Milo, what is your name? You know, good luck. And... Shit. Like, oh my god, this is this is overwhelming, right? So pleasant, <laughs> slow, so you know, motivating. And then I watch you do this with every single person. I mean, this is Lee Haney for you. For me, I know that everybody talks about goat, who is the goat. For me, there is no question. 31 years old, retired, because he just okay, he broke the I don't record and nobody thought it <laughs> he needs to go any further. But the class act that he was. I don't know if you guys remember, Chris, you were still not there, right? Yeah, you came a little bit later. That's 91, right? 91. <laughs> yeah. uh, I, I like to, to, to get your mind there, right? So, I was press there. conference. You remember how 1990, Sean Ray supposedly should have beat uh, uh, Lee, like uh, Lee, Lee LaBrada and Sean at that uh, drug test in Olympia 1990, right? So right. they, they were, right, they were right, hoping right. that yeah, they, they can beat him. And I, you know how Sean can be a dick at the press conference? He was talking just like uh, Mike Tyson was saying about uh, Lennox Lewis. I'm going to uh, eat your kids. I'm going to eat 
I'm going to take your house. I'm going to take your car. I'm going to take it. You know, <laughs> so that's how he was talking. And everybody was talking about uh, Dorian Yates, uh, you know, new wonder. He won the Night of Champions looking spectacular. But I remember I was backstage first Olympia, right? Of course, I'm, I'm observing everything, pumping up like crazy. I did my whole one hour of pump up. Right? <laughs> and uh, Lee Haney is there doing nothing, talking to some Oscar development people, right? 15 minutes before the stage, you know, they say 15 minutes, he's still talking, right? And Labrada and Sean and Dorian, everybody's waiting, you know, to see what uh, uh, Lee Haney looks like. So finally, you know, he walks to the first mirror, right? He had a jacket. He unzipped the jacket, you know, put it off. And I, I swear to you, that moment, I relived a million times. It was complete silence. And the temperature fucking dropped like five degrees. <laughs> I mean, I was like, ah. Huh. Hey, you know? hey, I always said that Lee Haney looked the best ever at his last show. Yeah, and he another one. after that. So me talking about how old was he? You said 31, was he 34? 32, 31? yeah. 31. Imagine I'll... that. That's when everybody's career starts or even later. I, he retired. I turned pro at 32. And, and yeah. I saw Dor Dorian, actually, I saw the back-to-back -back comparison at the show uh, on pictures. And I said, he had Dorian by so many miles. I mean, I can't even believe it. I, I can totally see what you described. <laughs> I was like, that guy was on, man. I don't know. He's, he's a true Mr. Olympia, dude. Holy do, you guys, do you guys remember when they used to weigh him in, like, officially in front yeah. of the media? Do you think they should bring yeah. that back? I think that will be that will be almost better than a press conference. I love that. I, I love actually it. Think that, I, think I was there. Idea. I was there. That was at Universal Studios, and they had the boxing that the uh, the boxing robes on the black boxing robes yeah. like Cassius Clay yeah. uh, coming into weigh in. And uh, but I'm a I'm a Lee Haney fan through and through. I'm the number one Lee Haney fan in the world, and you that must, was my guy. Yeah, that's why I patterned my body after. That's where uh, I studied him, and uh, Moses, yeah. I, I wanted to talk like him. I want I've studied his videotape. I could say it word for word from start to finish. Uh, you know, I just wanted to know everything about this guy, and he he just I just patterned my whole look after a second coming to be hanging. I tried anyway, and he's all around just a fucking great person. I mean, doesn't it doesn't matter when you meet him, doesn't matter who he talks to. He's just an all-around perfect ambassador uh, for the sport. But you know hey, how how good does he look still? Yeah, he I mean, how how, how old is healthy. how old is Lee now? I, I, I think sixty. Is is he, right? No, he must be older than sixty. Uh, no. but but so as you say, overall he is such a nice guy. Now now imagine this ninety-nine Arno Classic. I'm uh, signing the pictures, and then with the corner of my eye, I said, this is Lee Haney in my line? Okay. It's like, uh, I'm looking at this, oh, you know, he said, no, no. He didn't want to pass anybody. He waited for about 10, 15 minutes to come and say hello. <laughs> so Lee. Are you serious? I mean, who does that? I mean, really, you know, so I have, like, utmost respect for, for, for this gentleman. But, uh, uh, okay. We all love Ronnie, and we all think that Ronnie at his best would probably beat Lee Haney as his best when you consider, okay, that so maybe, right? But Lee Haney was good enough to, at that time, at that era, and if he had a little bit of heat, like he had in 91 from Dorian, right? He improved. I agree with you, Gunter, that 91 is the best Lee Haney we've ever seen. What would be 1992? And 92 in Helsinki, I don't think that uh, Dorian looked any uh, super impressive. He won. He okay. You know. Uh, he was really uh, shredded. He was shredded. Yeah, but smaller. And, uh, and yeah. uh, uh, on the merits of uh, what uh, Gunther just said, even back comparisons, I remember very well, and I'm sure that you knew, you know, uh, Chris, when they did the last spread and, and, and uh, uh, Lee Haney looked at Dorian, right, like, you spread the lights and you open up, you know, uh, you know lights out. It's my house, right? Yeah. <laughs> let me tell you. This is what will happen 92 too. I don't know 93. 93, there was something special. Yeah, it was. But let me tell you about that last spread of Lee's. The thing is, 
when he won 88 at the Universal Studios, I was there. I was in the last row, but I could see everything. You know, I bought my ticket. I drove up there, and uh, I remember uh, watching him on television, getting ready for it. He was saying that goes in Venice. Uh, but, you know, he made everyone look like children. It was like he was seven feet tall, and everybody else was about five feet tall. He just, he just eclipsed everybody on that stage, and it was just... To see that last spread open up, man, that's the thickness of it and the width all together. Oh, man, it was something to see, man. Yeah. And you got to see it in person. Like, you can see videos. You can see uh, photos. You yeah. can, it can never do the body justice to see the, my, the muscle fibers flickering as it's going, uh, opening up. All the stuff you know, that goes along with yeah, it. Yeah, you know, I, and I want to know with little, how little investment he did that. Because he looks to me that... He always was with everything on the minimum. I think he probably trained probably more natural than anybody else, I guess. Yeah, you know, man. you know, he, I, I'm telling you, if, if he, when I looked at it, when he was like, what, 32, when he retired, I was like, how is that even possible? You know, it's like, and then he just retires. I mean, he, you felt like he could still go another 10 years. Yeah. Yes. You know, but, I but, but, uh, Chris, I was probably right next to you in that last throw. I also, 88, I came to, to States 87, 88, you know, L.A., I have to watch it. And uh, as you said, the uh, Lee Haney won the second he turned, you know, to face the judges. I mean, that, uh, like you said, uh, mm -hmm. there, there were the boys and here's the father, right? You know, and with all due respect to everybody, I mean, Rich Gaspari played second, Barry LeMay was third, yes. you know, Lila Brad. And Barry Strider tried. tried. Yeah, Gary Stratton, yeah. And Gary Stratton was ripped to pieces, you know. You got to oh, yeah. give it to him, right? But yeah. he didn't have well, that. turned around. Yeah, when he turned around. But uh, as you said, I've never seen dominance as when you know, they walk and then they turn to the judges. And when Lee spread those lads, it was just like, show's over. <laughs> you know, yeah. you don't need to pose. Yeah. It's unbelievable. I still I always have that one picture in my head. Where he's in a thing in the streets of New York with the jeans on. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, wow, I bought that that photo. Yeah. Yeah. I bought that so awesome. yeah. <laughs> yeah. That is Damn so right. Awesome. You diet down, train hard, and supplement smart for months. When the time comes to step on stage, don't leave your tan to chance. Go with the pros. Pro tan. Number one worldwide since 1987 and the official sponsor of the Olympia for the last 15 years. Don't step on stage without it. Pro 10. Talking about athletes, I want to I want to switch it up a little bit. Talk about athletes. You just had you just Reagan just you guys just celebrated his birthday, right? How old yeah. is he? How old is he now? 29. Can you believe that? 29, 29. years old. So he's still in his yeah. 20s. I, I I wanted to ask you this, Milos, because you you trained a few guys and 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 there's about how many how many of them are getting ready for the Olympia that you work with right now? I mean, uh, uh, Samson and uh, uh, Logan and Logan is uh, classic uh, the classic physique, yeah. but just uh, Samson and uh, and Regan and uh, Regan uh, Olympia qualified. Yeah, I, I'm just, are you gonna get Samson over here to train in the states, or is he gonna stay over I, there? I don't know. Going? I mean. Uh, I would love to see him here. You know, shit. Of course, he now he became a little bit more popular. He's doing some guest posings, and I don't know. Uh, the offer is always there to come here before the Olympia, right? And and squeeze real workouts. I mean, so would you yeah, train him? Like, would you train him together, Don, or you separate him? Yeah, I mean, listen. They're uh, both your course. athletes. It's a I mean, uh, as a matter of fact, they, they train uh, uh, Tano Classic that they did before. They train together, mm -hmm. you know. As, as you know, uh, Dennis, back in the day, there was like, you know, five guys training together in my gym. Mm -hmm. And uh, if I train uh, with you and Chris, right, I would want you to, to beat both of us, Chris to beat us, and I would try to beat you, right? Mm -hmm. uh, let's give everything and then... Uh, let the best man win and shake hands. But uh, you know, for I want to ask you guys because uh, publicly, you know, unexpected uh, <laughs> for Regan Grimes, right? You know, Regan. Yeah. I was his fan since 2017. You know, when I've seen that uh, physique, like, oh my god! So we all love aesthetics, right? So there's 
no way possible that anybody in bodybuilding will look at his physique and say, no, I don't want to look like that, or this is not good for the sport. So we all know this is very good for the sport, right? But it's still size game. You still need to, like Gunter was saying, 285, he looked great, but he's going against Ronnie. You know, he needs to be bigger. Chris, I mean, I love Chris's physique since 93, 4, 5, 6, or 7, right? But it was still, oh, he did just a little bit more. And then look, 99, when he put that additional size, it was shocking. I know that you, Dennis, even though 98, when you won uh, USA, fucking um, looking crazy. But then you blew up and you didn't like that look, right? But it, it was terrifying look. I mean, I, I'm sure that everybody that compete against you with that size, mind boggling, with all the stress of chess, fucking V taper. <laughs> They, they were concerned, and I put it this way. But now going into the show, you train Big Rami, right? And Big Rami wins because it's Big Rami, right? It's not because it's most aesthetic. It's not because he is the best conditioned. I mean, eh? <laughs> it, it's, still, it's still open division. I can understand that size rules. That's why Nick Walker is still a player, right? Uh, so... What would be your and Chris is your suggestion as well? And Gunter, what do you think Regan still needs to you know, move move up? Can I can I answer that? Yeah. So this is what I noticed with Regan. No matter what, I mean, and maybe a particular show that he would do the, the New York Pro, the the something that he just looks like. Oh man, this guy he's on he he's ready to rock right now. You know, he's ready to take that next step. Uh, up in his, uh, you know, physically, mentally, everything. Um, and then he'll get to some shows, maybe the big show, the biggest stage, and he'll go up there and he would just look like he don't have it yet. He don't have it yet. And he'll look like, uh, you know, when he went down to Classic, he looked like a Rottweiler out there next to those guys. Then he get to the Open, you know, he'll just, he'll come in there you know, double dutching for a spot, but then it just don't, it just sort of gets lost sometime up in the lineup. Uh, I don't know from the judge standpoint or from just uh, getting overshadowed by another who, uh, you know, who is at their peak physically already, but he, he is still young. And part of it is just because he's still young. And you know when he's 32, 33, or something like that, that body's going to be at its full capacity of what it can hold, what it, what that's because the structure like it still can hold so much more. And I just think, uh, you know, uh, still can improve on some posing. Still, because it's not about <laughs> let's say when you help someone pose and you, they're doing it perfect in front of you. Oh yeah, we're going to go through the show. It don't always pan out like that on the stage. It don't pan out like that. And that's what some of these young pros and young amateurs need to understand. You know, when you hit that pose, you took 30,000 pitches for your, your coach and you're picking the best one. It's not always going to pan out like that when you go to compete. <laughs> the lights are on, you're hungry, you, you're tired. You just went out there two more times. That next shot is going to might depend on your placing, but it's not all, you know, all what it's cracked up to be when you come to, uh, to competition. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Dennis, what do you think? I think he's one good show away from breaking through. Yeah, yeah. One good show. He needs one great showing at a good show. I'm not talking about a show in Egypt yeah. or in Europe. Here in the yeah. U.S. He needs a breakthrough in the U.S. And, and, and that's basically it. He's 29 years old. And like Chris said, he's, he's going to come into his own in the next two to three years where his yeah. body can only get better, even though he's already great. You know? Mm -hmm. But he's, he gets to a point where... He's definitely going to be one of those guys that'll be, you know, fighting for the title, you know, once the the old yeah. guard, you know, when the guard changes again and then the new crop is coming up and then they're, they're going to run the show. So that's yeah. why I think one great show in the U.S., get a good showing for, it's not for him to break through. And you yeah. can't speed up reps. You can't speed up time in the gym. You need, like, so many reps in a year that you mm -hmm. can make. There's no way to, to jump those repetitions you got to go through those days and just put in that time right yeah. right when, when were you at your best uh, uh chris 
Um, I bet. I mean, I had a, I had a spark. Like I went all in. Like for '99, I, I gave everything I had because, in '98, I was pissed because I was sixth again. I've been sixth my first year, my sixth my second year. I've been sixth so many times, you know. And I was just like, I remember on video, I was saying, uh, you know, after the show, I remember uh, Nasser, uh, God rest his soul. Uh, I mean, he was saying something about I didn't deserve to be up in there or, or I didn't deserve to be him or something like that. And I was like, Master, with all due respect, you was off. There's no way you should have beat me. I should have beat you, Kevin, and, and Sean. I said, <laughs> I said, I'll tell you what, I'm going to be in the top three because I think I deserve to be in the top three last year. And so in my mind, I'm going to beat these guys, even though they have been uh, Arnold Classic champions, they've been you know, great champs in their own right, been at their peak. I seen, you know, I took their best shot. Everyone came in full, dry and everything. Uh, but I just thought I was going to beat them. And, I, and then happily, you know, I beat them and, and I picked my top three spot. And that was just something meaningful for me because training with Flex Wheeler also at the time, you know, being training partners, being second and third in Olympia was, was kind of like, uh, not many people have done. I don't know if it's ever done before, but not many training partners go second and second and three uh, in the Olympia. Even though I could have edged out him also in that shot. So, so, what, so, so, what do you say? Which was which was your best package? Was it but, uh, was it ninety nine? That was a look, but I got a little bit more mature, a little bit fuller after that. And I thought when I was in Australia, I kind of nailed a a, a, a very good. Dry package, but also full. What um, what year? Uh, I think it was. Uh, I had blue trunks on. I don't remember exactly the year, but is this, probably, is this the year you had to throw? Yeah, yeah, I, I was, had that going on. That was, and then I went. That was, then I went to the braids after that. Huh? I, think, I think that was two thousand two. Two thousand two or three or something like that, or no two. I it was something, but I, was, I think it was I the year. I think it was the year I came, but I didn't compete. I was just sitting in the audience, and you that year. Oh, okay, I think so. Yeah, I was. Yeah, I was. I was tight, man. I can get some more photos of that, but I, I man. I tell you I was, when. I tell you what. What year impressed me other than 1999 Olympia is the. Uh, what year was it? I remember that was. I just was it the 1999 uh, Ironman. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Ironman. I was Ironman. I, that impressed me too because I, I just turned pro the year before. I don't yeah. know why you point me out from the fucking stage anyway. So I was sitting there. I didn't say a word about you. You remember that? Yeah. <laughs> he got got off stage and he's just pointing at me like you next. <laughs> you know his mouth. You next. You next. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. That was a that was a good look because I remember when I went there with Melvin to watch the show and I remember when Chris turned around back then and his fucking hamstrings he had lumps there was lumps I was like is this what's growing out of his shit back then <laughs> no that was a great yeah. look that and and you know the stage light you, at the Ironman that was uh, the stage light I don't think this was there, there was any oh, yeah. stage that had better lightning than than the Ironman in in, uh, in Redondo Beach. Oh yeah. my step. I love that show, man, so much. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm the, behind you. The, the poster behind you, which show is that? That was the Arnold Classic. Uh, I think 2000, Arnold Classic, maybe, something like that. No, hey, do you have braids in that picture? Yeah, I got braids. That, that wasn't 2000 then. <laughs> no? No, I was there at 2000. Mm. Oh one, it was somebody. Now I'm gonna get, I'm gonna get Jay in that that show. Yeah, it had to be was, la had to be later. Jay was in. Had to be 2002 or three or four. Three, I don't know. Or, yeah, four. Yeah. Uh, Gunter, what yeah. is yours? My <laughs> for my best. Well, you know, yeah, knows, right? <laughs> but do you think hey, Gunter? Do you see the other show, Olympia? I, I did uh, I did actually look really good in 2005 too, but I didn't get a call out. So I placed fourth at the Olympia. Yeah. I did get a call out. Three. Do you remember that? It was so funny. I placed fourth, and then I was like, "Well, I, you know, I don't came backstage, and it literally tipped on my chest, and I said, oh, you should have gone a place higher.'" And he actually thought that you know it was really true. Cool. <laughs> I placed fifth, and I said, "Why?" I didn't even get compared to the top three. How is that possible? And it was Victor. 
Jay and Ronnie, I think. Or was it? 2000, yeah, it what was, year? 2005. Uh, you, were, you were fourth. Two, yeah. No. Yeah, yeah, but, but, but I didn't get compared to the top three. There was money, though. They had uh, Ronnie, Jay, Victor, and then it was me and two others. And so they kind of, it was a weird, weird comparison that year. Well. Was it, wasn't that the year where they had that challenge round? <laughs> no, oh, no that was different. 2003, I think. No, 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 no. It wasn't 2003. It had to be 2005 or 2006. And two th it was two or three years. Remember two years okay. where, yeah, uh, yeah. one year where Gustavo Badel beat Ronnie in the challenge round? Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 What, uh, what year was that at the press conference that Ronnie said, I weighed 300 pounds? Two, 2003. Yeah, yeah. 2000, <laughs> right two, 2003. Cause that was yeah. that that was the next Olympia after uh, Gun uh, Gunter beat Ronnie. Oh, Gunter, do you right. think Gunter, do you think you look better at the Olympia in two thousand two or at the GNC? Me personally, yeah. Personally, I actually thought I looked better at the Olympia than at the GNC. Mm. That's me personally. I do was at the GNC. I weighed in. I weighed it in a 302 pounds that morning, though. That was kind of freaky. But um, I, I felt like all together, I like, I don't know, maybe I like my look better. You know, mm. I don't know how he, that compares to it, but somehow I felt I felt the best look I felt 2002. I had, you, yeah. you, almost, you also pissed Ronnie off with that one. That, he wasn't very happy with that one. <laughs> oh, dude. I still, I, was I, I heard for years, he was I heard for years about it. Yeah. I heard for years about it. Yeah. <laughs> hey, Dennis, you, you mentioned uh, the challenge round, and uh, it, it seems like nobody really liked it. I actually think it's a phenomenal thing, but they screwed up because they let you call the same pose. So first time when Jay beat Gunter in uh, Bagdell Biceps, right? Uh, Gunter called it, and then when Jay was going, now what do you call it? He called the same thing because he just won, right? So that was stupid. But, but really, who would want, if I go next to Chris and say, okay, you know, pick the pose. And of course, he's going to calculate and pick uh, what is the best. And, and then I'm going to try to find a pose that I think I can beat him. I think that that's super entertaining, but end up being a shit. I mean, I have to say, end up being a shit. But I think it's great. Wouldn't you want to have a pose other than mandatory, like twisting back or something, like... Arnold used to do or Gunther's pose or Chris Cormier, you know, master of, you know, twisting. Who doesn't want to see that? We just don't have a time. But I think it was a brilliant idea. It just uh, end up uh, end up looking bad. Yeah, yeah. well, you don't think so? I remember that year Victor was uh, in the top five, and I think that was the year that Gunther was, I thought that was the year you talked about, where Victor, yeah. Victor <laughs> he didn't win one single pose. Doesn't matter who he played, he, he did not get a pose. You know? Right. But and, he, he placed third, didn't he? I think he placed third. In the I, I don't remember Victor placing third. I know he got second in 2007. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm here on a, on a master memory. 2005, Ronnie Coleman, Jay Calder, Gustavo, Gunther, fourth, Victor, fifth, and Dennis, sixth. Yeah, so he was fifth, you know? And that was the year they did the, they did the challenge round. Mm -hmm. Gunter, you don't remember that because you were in it. I didn't. I didn't yeah, make it I, in. I, I, know, I, I know that I did it, but I didn't know. Yeah. Was it 2005? That was that was the first year because usually it's the finals is top six. You remember that, guys, right? Top six. Yeah. And that was the first year they did they, only the top five, and I was like, "Fuck, I'm six, and I'm not even in this damn thing." Oh, <laughs> but I, I don't remember. <laughs> I think the challenge round, round was only 2004. No, there was there was the first challenge round. Ronnie won. Remember last shot when he said "real latch spread game over latch spread something." That was the first time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The game second over. year, Gustavo Badel won. So there was there was at <laughs> least two. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. One year, yeah. the, the, the okay, second right. the, the second year was what there was um, who was up there too. Um, um, Marcus Rule was up there one year. Yeah. Nice. Know? So it's definitely. Hey true. guys, I got, I got a question. Uh, you know, there's always something that sticks out in your mind when you compete and you feel like, man, that just blew my damn mind. And you actually competed against a person. Like, do you have anything that sticks out in your mind? Like, that? I remember one time I was 
I was in my Olympia, uh, maybe be, I think 94, my first Olympia. Uh, first of all, Wayne called me out seven times in a row in that. And I was just like, I thought they were joking because I was so tired. I had snot running out my nose. I was, I was, it was blurry. I couldn't see nothing. And they, they wait till I walk up this damn stairs. Remember the stairs they had? So I'm doing stairs, doing cardio, and I'm going out there and I'm going back down the stairs to go do my, to go do my quarter turn. And man, I remember that part sticks out of my mind. And also me and Dorian had the same shoes. So I had my, my uh, Jordan slip-ons and I put them by the stage, but I noticed in another pair there also. And so we're coming in and off the stage and I put on Dorian's shoes and I went walking around the venue and uh, someone told me that he was looking for me. I was like, damn, I was like, it was like, damn, Dorian, everybody said, yeah, Dorian's looking for you, man. I was like, damn, what does he want, right? So then when he finally called up to me, he told me, I, you know, we need to switch shoes. I had his, his slides on. So, but walking on to the stage, I was right behind him. And I just remember uh, leading up to the stairs I saw his back coming up, and I saw this like a little he had the, the, the little hump, like right in the dead center the middle of his back. But it just got darker and darker and darker and darker, like that. And now I remember that at that point, I knew I was with the big boys. I was like, man, that's some crazy shit to see. Was that your first you know, Olympia? This, yeah, it was my first Olympia. Yeah. And I was like, man, I remember that shock the hell. I mean, do you have any? Anybody else have any other situations like that that sticks out in their mind? I know we had a long career. Yeah, I, I same thing I, well, I've seen with Ronnie, but uh, I know exactly what you're saying because I've seen the same thing when Dorian is climbing up the stairs and the fucking looks like a Mount Everest, like a fucking, you know, so fucking huge, big thing. <laughs> I mean, traps yeah. and laughs and everything. But uh, Ronnie Coleman, 98, okay, uh, Olympia. Uh, you guys know going into the show, how many really believe that he can take uh, Flex? Come on, it was Flex show to win. Flex is show. And, and, yeah, and I was uh, in, in the locker room with him, you know, before pre-judging, and he didn't look nothing like, I mean, you know, it's typical Ronnie, you know, uh, where we say, uh, Gunther, I hope you don't mind when I say, oh, it's still Gunther. You look great, but they didn't consider you can, you know, go and challenge for a title, and then all of a sudden they realized, oh, Gunther is that good? You could have challenged for a title in 2002. Well, Ronnie, 98, pre-judging, looked just like 97, remember? Uh, you were uh, eight, Ronnie was ninth, and I was tenth in '97 Olympia. So now '98 Olympia, okay, it's Ronnie, you know. But he was watery. He was nothing. He was like fourth, fifth guy to be called out for the prejudging, you know, for the symmetry round. And then for the Muslim, and then he starts sweating and getting alive. And fucking by the end of the prejudging, that was the craziest condition anybody has ever seen. I'm going back to the locker room, now that you say, uh, if I remember anything. And he <laughs> bent over right in front of me, and this fucking hamstrings, right? It was in the glutes, like shit. And, and uh, I just had to, I said, Ronnie, you know, let me touch it. And he was exactly, <laughs> I had to touch it. I mean, you know what I mean? This is kind of thing. Uh, let me you know, touch it. Let me touch it. It was. <laughs> but, but, but hold on. Uh, before I forgot, Gunther, the funniest yeah. story you ever told me, uh, I'm, I'm going to tell publicly. <laughs> uh, Gunther had uh, uh, some manager, some Filipino lady or whatever, right? And uh, she tells uh, Gunther it would be very good that he dress up like a fucking Hercules. <laughs> Like a what? <laughs> with a skirt and everything else, they go out in, the, in the Santa Monica, right? And yeah, yeah, how good are What? Oh. Yeah, well, well, I'll let you finish it, but, but for me, that was so funny because he's telling me the story. So he has that fucking thing and, uh, and the skirt, and, uh, and you know how Gunther is smiling, he's so personable, he posed with everybody, <laughs> I mean, and everybody's touching him and all this shit. So finally, somebody came to him and said, hey, man, you know, what are you doing here? I said, what do you mean? You know, what? <laughs> this, is a, this is a gay parade. <laughs> you remember? <laughs> oh, they loved you. They loved you up there. 
you know, you have no idea. That was an welcome to America like I've never experienced before. I mean, I, it was literally... So I was with my wife. We were walking on Halloween at on Santa, Monica Boulevard, uh, Santa Monica Boulevard on Halloween. They have this gay parade, right? I had no clue what it was. And I said, okay, so what are we going to? Oh, everybody dresses up and this and this. And I said, okay, well... You know, it's like, well, is there anything, <laughs> anything we are going on? No, 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 you don't need to worry about anything. Yeah, sure enough, I come there, and then here we go. So I'm really walking that up, and then they literally took my wife here, they pushed their comment at the time, my ex. They pushed her aside, and we had all these guys, like, taking them my arm and hugging and all this stuff and taking all these pictures and stuff. We literally had to go. It went so bad at one point that I had to say, enough! <laughs> we literally had to run away. I mean, it was so bad. And, and Milos, you're right. I actually played for a while with it. But man, dude, it was, I did get to a point I said, okay, this is over, Kona. So we got to stop this right now. It was funny. I have no idea what I got into. <laughs> Well, that was my first experience. I just actually got here in 1997, it was, when I got here to uh, Venice. Well, man, man, man. So you've been in the States since 97? Yeah. When did you when, when did you get your citizenship? Because I remember seeing that, that's a while ago. Um, 2007, I think. Okay, so it's been already, that. it's been 15 years already. Wow. Well, I'm going with my with Kim. I'm going now, what, 15 years? Oh, yeah, 15 years. We are married. There you go. See, I have, uh, I have, hey, what's today's date? 28. So tomorrow, eight. tomorrow, I got 20. Ooh. Hey, Ooh. that's awesome. 20 years of marriage tomorrow. Hey, you remember so, Milos? So, uh, yeah. June 29th, 2002. I was there, yeah. Yeah, I said. Hey, I, I, I try to hope. I'm trying to remember about tomorrow. Shit, my ass. My Happy ass anniversary, Sin. Huh? Oh yeah. my god. Happy <laughs> anniversary. Yeah. 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 Shit, time flies, man. Look at us. Jesus. Old. Shit, I got a, I got an appointment with the uh, uh, arthritis doctor on 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 on, on Thursday. <laughs> oh shit. <laughs> I had to because I had no. I had to, uh, I showed it showed up. For some autoimmune disease, and I had to find out what it is now. So I'm getting the results on Thursday. Damn. I might. I, yeah, might. I know my, my knee be talking to me in the morning. Yeah. It's right when we throbbing. I don't know why. Really? It's just, uh, yeah. That might be yeah. arthritis. That might be arthritis. Yeah, I think so. It's been bone on bone like since since I was in the, you know in college wrestling. Yeah. So. Any yeah. injuries for you, Gunter? Well, actually, I did pretty good. Always training. I never got really hurt that much. But uh, your audio is a little low now. Your audio is a little low. I don't know. Yeah, did you change? Did you change something? Ever since you messed with that ear, you messed it all up. Oh, did I? Keep your hands to yourself. Keep your hands to your lap. <laughs> it was loud before, and now it's just. Yeah. Hey, so, do you think you guys all came from different countries? I'm, you know, <laughs> born here in America, California. <laughs> is there a difference in the, the body and the culture? from Germany to America as far as like, I don't know, from an enthusiasm uh, aspect to- what the, uh, the, I know what you're saying. Hard the, training, the, hardcore training. Well, yeah, it's better now. It, it was a little behind, uh, and, you know, it's probably still behind compared to the US and, and, and some other countries, but it's it's more popular now. And when, you, when, when shows, when something is happening in Germany, you can see the German fans are always there. They show up. They huh? show up. They show up, and uh, yeah. you know, and, and especially you can see it at the FIBO for how many years, you know, and and it's it's picking up a little bit. So it's it's not as popular as it is as a sport, but it 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 grew a lot. I would say in the last like said ten years, you know, and and of course guys like Günther, Marcus, Dennis Wolf, those were the reason why, you know, because before that right. before that we had you know who do we have Achim Albrecht. Like we had Andreas uh, Munzer. Andreas Munzer. Munzer, but Andreas Munzer was not German. He was from Austria. Austria, yeah. 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 So, but but we had you know, but those guys like you know, Günther, Roland. When I remember they turned pro the same year, came to the Olympia for the first time at the same year. Roland Chilok, you know, 
those guys were yes. back then, and 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 then you know we and they and they helped to to bring the sport up in Germany, and and, and you can Bro, see. Brother's a cool that. cat. I like yeah, that yeah, dude, yeah, yeah, yeah. He <laughs> coaches. Cool he coaches a lot of people now. He has a great team in Germany. You know, right. he comes. Uh-huh. He comes around. Gunter, Gunter, you remember like ninety four, five, six, every time I saw you and your ex wife, I was telling you that you need to come to to America and live. I mean, I was saying the same thing to Dennis uh, yeah. <laughs> back in the day. Yeah. Uh, there is a difference, you know. Uh, if you want to be in bodybuilding, I don't think it's uh, comparable, you know. Even though Dorian wanted to stay in uh, England, and uh, I'm sure you guys heard this, so uh, he let uh, all these guys drive Ferrari, go to the beach, and he would be like in, in uh, a winter, you know, having a hard time walking to the gym. But uh, yeah. Gunter, uh, ever regretted going to the United States? <laughs> no. You gave him everything. The United yeah, States yeah, gave no, him I mean, everything. I mean, I mean, you know, first of all, you know, coming to America, I mean, well, there were some, you know, in the beginning stages before I actually came in 90, 1997 to California. I was nine months in New Jersey. Well, I can tell you, I can write a book about that, man. Living in a factory, building on a mattress. You told me the story one time. Dude, it was like weird, man. That's a lot of things that people really don't know. My ex-wife always said we should, you know, write a book at some point about it. It was really interesting. I remember you said, I remember at one point you said you were this close of going back. Going back, yeah, 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 I remember. and And guess the person who kind of, told me not to do that and kind of talked me into really staying was Walter Clark. Do you remember Walter Clark from Gießen? The Walter, Walter Clark, Walter, Walter Clark. Walter Clark, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Walter, yeah, you're Deutsch to say. <laughs> Walter Clark. I was like, Walter, yeah. Walter Clark, Walter Walter. Clark. I don't, I don't know who that is. <laughs> Walter Clark, yeah. yeah. And, um, and uh, he said, Gunther, you know, I said, you didn't come this far to quit. You know, you got to stay there. Everybody just <laughs> waits here for you to quit. And, you know, at the time, it literally was that way because I trained it as German all this time. Mm. People say, oh, he will be back after three months. It will never work out. So for me, it was like, okay, I do it. And, you know, I found my first sponsor, Universal Nutrition, and then, you know, ran into Ed Connors. He said, hey, stay in my house for a while. So, and that worked out, you know. So, awesome. Awesome. Well, here, here you are today. Thank you for coming back. Just to make it on this podcast, I really appreciate it. Because on that note, on that note, we're gonna wrap this up for today, guys. You know, thank you, Milos. Right. Thank you, Chris. Good Gun- to see you, Gunter. Gunter, Gunter thank yeah, you. See you always. And hopefully Keep we can. Work we, up, man. You're all doing great. Yeah, and hopefully thank we you, can bro. arrange another old school roundtable, Gunter, with you. Sure, you know, I, because I'm sure the fans would love to hear from you. Yeah, sure, man. Great to see you, Gunter. And then it's a uh, happy anniversary for you and Sam. Thank you, brother. I appreciate yeah, it. Yeah, happy Thank anniversary, you. brother. All right, thanks, guys. Thank you, guys. Awesome. Take care. God bless you all. Be safe. Great. All right. <laughs>